Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I greet you once again in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and thank him for having brought me here to share the word of God with you this morning. And I am happy about the Covenant Quartet who sang so beautifully and prepared our hearts and minds to listen to the preaching of God's word through their special songs. And today we are called to meditate on Jesus saying, my peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. Everyone wants peace. Is there anyone who says, I don't want peace at all? No one will say. Whether a person of eminent national leader or a businessman who is facing pressures and deadlines at his office or a homemaker who has to cater to the needs of the children and the elderly parents, aged parents. Everything a man in the household or a student who is studying, who has to face his exams. Everybody wants peace because sometimes they lose, they don't have peace of mind. We all know. Most of us, if we have to confess honestly, we must say that we are always living under stress and tension. Isn't that true about many of us or most of us? Living always with stress and tension. Our days are like the prophet Jeremiah's days. When people cried, peace, 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 where, when there is no peace as recorded in the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 14. When we watch TV, the news, or read newspaper, we always hear about clashes, clashes everywhere. Wars and riots, murder, killing, rapes, sexual harassment. Though we live in comfortably in our houses, the domestic violence is on the increase. Our cities have become very modern because of the introduction of metro and other facilities that we enjoy. Yet, our streets are unsafe to travel. And therefore, our communication technology is unsurpassed, but there had never been more misunderstanding, misinformation, and misrepresentation of facts spread through media. So where can we have peace? Where, from where can we get peace? It's not, it's not a commodity that is sold in the marketplace. Where to find peace? Long-lasting peace or everlasting peace, fulfilling peace, and Many try to find peace through drugs or watch entertainments, but they know they are all temporary and they cannot enjoy lasting peace. Where can we go for peace? If we turn to the scripture, we will find first the source of peace. The source of peace. What is the source of peace? as we find in the Psalm chapter 29, verse 11. May the Lord bless his people with peace. May the Lord bless his people with peace. God alone is the source of peace. And that is why the Psalm prays to God. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And in Philippians 4, 7, we find the peace of God transcends all understanding, surpasses all understanding. And 1 Corinthians 14.33, since the Paul writes, since God is not a God of disorder or confusion, but God of peace, 
He is alone the God of peace. God alone can provide you and me the real peace, the genuine peace, the long-lasting peace, the eternal peace. And therefore, this morning, when we meditate upon Jesus' statement, my peace I give to you, let us come to the Lord. Let us seek God and his presence. Because James in his epistle, chapter 1, verse 17, writes, Every good gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. Every good gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. Without him or apart from him, we cannot have real peace. Because human beings cannot invent peace or invent peace or manufacture peace or produce peace. There is no factory called peace producing factory. So, we need to receive it as a gift from God. God out of his grace is ready to fill our hearts with peace. Provided we are willing to open our hearts and say, Lord, shower that peace. Showers of blessing we sing. Mercy drops around us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Yes, showers of peace we need today. And then, secondly, Jesus Christ is the channel or means of peace. Jesus alone is the channel or means of peace. Um, we read in Romans chapter 5, Paul writes in this epistle of Romans chapter 5, verse 1. First he says, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Peace with God only through Jesus Christ. Again, in verse 10 he says, for if we if while we were enemies, we were enemies because of the human, the sins we have committed. We were enemies to God, but now we have been reconciled to God by the death of his son so that we could enjoy peace. We could experience peace. So, we are now reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Writes Paul. And again, in John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, promises, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, and not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled. Let not your hearts be troubled. And in the epistle lesson that was read to us from John chapter 16, verse 33, Paul, Jesus again says, These things I have spoken to you, that you may have peace that you may have peace. So, God is the source of peace and Jesus Christ is the means of peace because God is the king of peace and Jesus is the prince of peace. God is the king of peace and Jesus Christ is the prince of peace. So when Jesus was born, the angelic host appeared to the shepherds, we all know, and then sang this chorus. Glory be to God on high, on an earth peace, and goodwill to among people in whom he loves. So, goodwill, peace, everything is given from heaven. Heavenly peace. A man was having so many physical problems as well as mental problems. He could not sleep. He was referred to a cardiologist, then to a nephrologist, and then to various doctors. And finally, he was advised to go and see a psychiatrist who was a committed Christian. And the psychiatrist, after seeing all the reports of various doctors, and then finally examined him and gave a prescription and said, you go and get this done. And he went to a drugstore and gave that to the pharmacist. And the pharmacist said, sorry, what is written is not available here. You better search for it in your home or go to CLS or ELS or any other Christian book show. He was wondering what? The doctor had given the prescription and you want me to get it from any CLS, Christian Literature Society or Evangelical Literature Society, what do you mean? 
she said, the pharmacist said, see the prescription, what is written. And what was written in the prescription is three doses every day of Romans 5.1. Three times take Romans 5.1, three doses of every day. Let me read to you again. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, you can enjoy peace that comes from above, from God, through Jesus Christ. And then, we need to also remember that Holy Spirit is the distributor of peace. As we find in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. It begins with love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, all the self-control. So, love, joy, peace, fruit of the Spirit. So, Holy Spirit is the one who distributes peace through the fruit, through the fruit. In order that you and I could demonstrate God's love poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, as Paul writes again in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. The love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we are able to demonstrate the love of God through our words, through our actions, through our reactions, through our behavior, through our lifestyle. Then there will be peace. So Holy Spirit is the distributor of peace. And what is the nature of this heavenly peace? I have chosen a few passages from the scripture to describe the nature of this heavenly peace, that peace come that comes from above. First of all, in the passage that was read to us as responsive reading, if you turn to Psalm 119, verse 165, where the psalmist writes, Great peace have those who love your law. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. Nothing can make you and me stumble and fall because great peace is assured for those who love your law, love the word of God, in other words. It's great peace. So the world cannot give, give such great peace. Whether League of Nations or United Nations organization, whatever it might be, whether any panchayat or arbitration board cannot establish real peace. Nothing. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, says the Lord Jesus. And then, in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, Isaiah writes in his 26th chapter, verse 3, that it's a perfect peace. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. The person will be kept in perfect peace. It's a perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you, O God. So it's a perfect peace. And then, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, do not be worried, but present your requests and make them known to God through your thanksgiving, prayer and petition. And then, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that transcends, that transcends all human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul writes, so, the peace of God that transcends all human understanding, comprehension of any human being, will keep your heart and mind. It not only transcends human understanding, but also misunderstanding. We can enjoy such peace. And then, this peace is inseparably connected with justice or righteousness. As the psalmist again says in Psalm 85, verse 10. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Righteousness or justice and peace kiss each other. So, justice and peace or righteousness and peace, they are two sides of the same coin. What God has joined together, let not man put asunder. 
God has joined them together. So, peace can be established wherever there is real justice. Hence, when natural justice, principle of natural justice is not applied, then there cannot be real peace. So, finally, what is your responsibility and my responsibility? Again, let me quote from Psalm 34, verse 14. Seek peace and pursue it. Seek peace and pursue it. It's not easy to get such peace. You must seek peace. You must train all your nerves to find that peace. And pursue it. Again, verse Psalm 116, 19, verse 165. First, in order to experience such peace, 165, great peace of those who love your law or who love your word. Only if you love the word of God, the scripture, you can experience great peace that comes from above. Secondly, in this verse that I read from, Book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. Those who trust in you have perfect peace. You will keep him in perfect peace because of the trust in God. How many of us trust God? Trust and obey, for there is no other way. To be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. There is no other way. Secondly, trust and obey. And pray with thanksgiving, as Paul writes again, in uh, which I have quoted, earlier, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Present your request to God with prayer and thanksgiving. Then the peace of God that transcends all human understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, which surpasses all understanding. And do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So, pray for this. And that is why we sing, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What is the next line? Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So, pray. That's what Paul advises us. And acts always with justice, as I have quoted from Psalm 85, verse 10. Acts always with a sense of justice. And demonstrate through the fruit of the Spirit that you have love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness. So, that is our responsibility. Let me quote with an incident that happened. Betan Russell, all of us are familiar with the name, a great philosopher of the previous century, a leading philosopher of Great Britain, who lived in the previous century, who lived up to the age of 97. And you know, he was not a believer in God. He was awarded Nobel Prize for his contribution in the field of literature for the contribution, his contribution was mainly on human freedom, the freedom of individual. And also he was awarded that for his human values, upholding human values. And on his deathbed, when he was about to breathe his last breath, he called his wife to come nearer to him. And the wife, Flinch, her name is Flinch, she came nearer to him, and Bertrand Russell looked at her face and said, embrace me, Flinch, my dear Flinch, embrace me. I have been searching for peace all along in my life, but never found it except in your arms. Never found it except in your arms, he said this, and closed his eyes. A leading philosopher and 
a person was awarded nobel prize for his contribution said only in your arms i find peace to his wife and it was his fourth wife and it was his fourth wife what does it mean he could not live peacefully with other women so this is not real peace this is not genuine peace this is not peace that comes from above and beloved this morning jesus promises my peace i am ready to give to you i live with you are you ready to open your heart and experience it seek it pursue it read the word of god in order to find it so that i may speak to you through your conscience and make you feel the need for such peace that transcends all human understanding pray for it so we are now going to come to the altar of god to receive the body and the blood of our lord jesus christ in the form of bread and wine he is the prince of peace god is the king of peace and jesus christ is the prince of peace so source of peace and means of peace are available to us through these elements when we come to the altar let us say lord i want to experience such peace i want to go from the search as person who is having such peace which cannot be troubled by circumstances outward circumstances whether my health condition deteriorates whether i become poorer poorer whether i lose everything whether i become alone still you are with me your rod and your staff will comfort me guide me i am confident lord lord it help me to experience this peace someone said do not be hurried or worried until you are buried do not be hurried or worried until you are buried if you are hurried and worried you will lose peace so until you are buried if you want to experience peace we some of us pray for peaceful death but without experiencing peace that comes from above now which self available we want only peaceful death why why don't we experience it now when christ offers my peace i give to you not as the world gives just now we sang that beautiful song peace peace and how many of us really long for peace let us pray lord we thank you for speaking to us through the written word of the scripture and through the spoken word of the message we thank you lord for enabling us to see ourselves as we really are though we say that we have peace we know that it's not real peace genuine peace that is not permanent peace and we know that it's not great peace that comes from above and it's not peace that transcends all human understanding or comprehension it's sometimes false peace as people who lived in the time of jeremiah we say peace peace when there is no peace lord forgive us for failing to see ourselves as we really are and enabling to fail having failed to experience the real peace that you read, you are ready to offer to us at this time as we come here to take part in the holy communion the body and the blood of our lord jesus christ because you said my peace i give you you are going to give us peace through the form of bread and wine that we are going to receive which is your body and blood and immediately after resurrection when you appear to the disciples you said peace be with you peace be with you these are your words when you are born when you are resurrected you always showered peace upon people and today also help us to come to the lord's table with that hope and faith that you will award us with peace and help us to leave this church as people who have peace in our hearts which transcends all human understanding the peace that comes from above the heavenly peace in jesus name we ask amen